Sharon Stone is an award-winning actress who has been largely out of the public eye for several years due to a life-threatening illness. Now she's looking to restart her career. Lee Cowan has our Sunday profile. This was the Montgomery Cliff property, and I wanted, I'm sure that then Elizabeth Taylor and Natalie Wood and oh, yeah. Robert Wagner and all of those great people were over here swimming, and I just wanted to keep it. I wanted to preserve it. Sharon Stone's home does have that sweet smell of old Hollywood. Those are huge. Yeah, and they smell yeah. fantastic. Not that she's old, mind you. She's just shy of 60 and looks more like 40. And hers is hardly the lonely mansion from Sunset Boulevard. Which one of you heathens is throwing their napkin? Oh, it's the adult. It echoes with the chaos of kids. Stone's three adopted sons, ages 11, 12, and 17, make sure of that. Mom! What, can I play? Thank you. You want to guard me? As a single mom, there isn't much time for reflection. But if there's a place for peace, it's by that pool under her angel's trumpet tree. And I talk to my tree. Yeah. It's pretty fabulous. It smells so great. Does the tree talk back? It kind of does. <laughs> Life does talk differently than it used to. Ever since a serious brain hemorrhage she suffered back in 2001, nearly took it all away. There was about a 5% chance of me living. So it affected your speech? My speech, my hearing. Walking? Walking. I mean, did you have to sort of start over and relearn? Yes, everything. All of this? Everything. Really? My whole life was uh, wiped out. It didn't matter. She was an Oscar-nominated actress, one of the most talked about of the 90s. After her stroke, in the eyes of Hollywood, Stone says, she was considered damaged goods. Others aren't that interested in a broken person. So you just felt alone in a lot of ways? I was alone. She tried to go back to work, but there was a frailty she never felt before. I'm sure I seem peculiar coming through this all these years, and I didn't want to tell everybody what was happening. Because, you know, you just seem... This is not a forgiving environment. So that's where Sharon Stone's been all these years, recovering, being a mom, and putting her life back together after her second divorce. I just was not the girl who was ever told that a man would define me. It was that if I wanted to have a man in my life, it would be for partnership. It wouldn't be an arrangement. It would be an actual relationship. Yeah. And um, since those are pretty hard to come by. <laughs> <laughs> Relationships? Yeah, real ones. I've been around. I know the track. Her focus now, she says, is getting back to work, reclaiming her place in the spotlight. You know, don't pretend that you weren't throwing me all kinds of signals. <laughs> the vehicle she's using for her comeback is Mosaic, a Steven Soderbergh project that couldn't have been imagined way back in the 90s. It's a whodunit where viewers can choose how they pick their way through the clues via a smartphone app. And then you follow it like a family tree, you know, where it has, you know, your family tree branches out. It's like that, and then you push where you want to watch. You see it from different people's point of view. Let's say I buy you a drink or something. Drink would be great. Okay, how about now? How about now? Because I'm freezing. <laughs> HBO will soon release it as a traditional six-part miniseries for those who don't feel like being tech savvy. Stone decide. plays a famous children's author looking for love with plenty of willing suitors who all become suspects when she mysteriously disappears. She thought the role had something to say about relationships that was unique and powerful, especially now. We were raised to accommodate men, particularly in my generation. And women so often lose their own identity to the identity of the men that they're with. They even change the way they dress and what they do to fit to the men that they're with. Things are changing, she says. She joined others on the Golden Globe red carpet this past week with her son Rowan in tow, wearing black in solidarity with those highlighting sexual harassment and gender inequality in Hollywood. We're starting to acknowledge our own gifts 
as women and not think that we have to behave as men in order to be empowered or powerful or valuable. And I don't know how to ask this in a delicate way, but were you ever in a position like that? Were you, did you, that you felt that you were uncomfortable? <laughs> You're laughing, but I, I don't know. I don't know if that's a nervous laugh or are you kidding me? Of course I was, laugh. <laughs> I've been in this business for 40 years, Lee. Can you imagine the business I stepped into 40 years ago? Oh, well, that's why I asked. Looking I... like I look yeah. from nowhere, Pennsylvania. I didn't come here with any protection. I've seen it all. Her journey through the business started, as you might expect, as a model. She had just what photographers were looking for, even if she thought she didn't always fit in. I always thought I had the worst body. Seriously, you did? Yeah. How is that possible? Well, because I just, <laughs> you know, in those days, everybody was reed thin. So everyone was nine feet tall and two pounds. She had a more athletic build, as she calls it. And her first big movie role opposite Arnold Schwarzenegger in Total Recall put that athleticism on full display. Why are you doing this, Lori? <laughs> And yet, Stone says, there was still something standing in the way of starter. No one thought I was sexy. And probably I'm not or wasn't, but I was smart enough to realize that I had to seem sexy. So she decided to pose for Playboy, a calculated move that helped her land perhaps her most provocative role. There's uh, no smoking in this building, Miss Trammell. What are you going to do? Charge me with smoking? You don't have to remember the plot of Basic Instinct to remember that moment. It's nice. Do you, do you get tired of, of that scene following you around, even to this day? You know, people think they saw so much, but I too have a pause on my remote control. There's not that much to see. You're in over your head. Maybe. But this is how I'll catch my killer. She proved she could be sexy. But sex was not the selling point of the part, she says. In fact, it wasn't the point at all. That character is a sociopath. But a very sexy sociopath. But for her, sex was just another tool. Pour me something tall and muscular. Just as she willed her way into that role, she's willing her own comeback, engineering it in a way that doesn't ignore her time away, but uses it. The well that I'm now bringing back to work is not a well I had before. I'm so grateful to have this. The, the chance of my having it is, is so slim. <laughs> uh. <laughs> if it's meant to be, she says, it'll be. Quinn! But from the looks of it, Sharon Stone has already made the most of her second chance at life. Two legs! Oh, that was so good! Oh, no! That was so that good! Was so good that was so good!